What's up guys, CP Moddy here, back with another video, and phones these days are getting really, really expensive, especially on that high-end side, and yet, they're delivering really not that much difference in terms of user experience, and in some cases even specifications from their last generation brothers. And that got me wondering, what would happen if you were to pick up a flagship like this guy from just a few years ago, versus a modern, kind of mid-range type of mobile phone, and see what you actually get for the price that you are paying. And upon having that idea, I looked around on eBay and also to over on Amazon and I found a number of phones that would have been well over $1,000, take an iPhone for example, and they are available for around three to $400, completely brand new in box. We're not talking refurb units, we're not talking dodgy eBay knockoff things, we're talking fully legit iPhones and even Android phones for a fraction of the cost that they did cost when they were brand new, mainly because they're two, three, even four years old, still perform perfectly fine, but they're not exactly the world's latest and greatest anymore. Now, as you've been seeing, I've been holding this guy up and this is the HTC One M9 Plus and I've actually been holding it up in a few videos that I've been shooting lately as I've been using this guy as a daily driver whilst I test it for a couple other videos that I am working on. But it definitely does ask the question, is something like this actually still relevant here in 2018? Now, if you don't exactly know what the M9 Plus is because, well, let's face it, it wasn't a very popular phone, basically this was the flagship HTC One M9, which I have, you know what? So I actually have both of them right here. So the M9 Plus is basically the, well, plus version of the HTC One M9. Now this guy was your flagship that was well known in the Western market. So Australia, the US, UK, all those places got the HTC One M9. However, the M9 Plus was released in a few other regions such as Asia and also to, I believe over in India, even though India is technically also to part of Asia. But my point being, it wasn't exactly released in the Western market. So we're not exactly so familiar with this guy, rather we're familiar more with this unit, but essentially the M9 Plus is just the standard M9 with a bit of a different camera setup, a fingerprint scanner which is very important for sort of hanging around here in 2018, and also to a few under the hood tweaks as well. But I've been using this guy as I did mention as a daily driver for a couple weeks now, so I thought I might as well share my experience with picking up a phone that is kind of, well, from a little while ago and see how it actually stands up in today's performance. And honestly, on initial impressions, it wasn't too bad. Now, yes, I honestly got sort of a little bit in trouble over on eBay because I thought I was buying a complete brand new sealed inbox unit. Turns out the uh, fine print was the phone was new, the accessories and everything in the box wasn't. That's why when you take a look at this shot right here, the phone doesn't fit in the cradle thing in the box. Anyway, not the world's biggest problem. But when you are looking at something like a used phone or even just an old flagship, there are a few things you still wanna take into consideration to make sure it's able to stand up in the more modern world. And first and foremost is that fingerprint scanner. Now yes, I did pick up a phone with one, but without a fingerprint scanner, especially if you are coming from a phone that does already have a fingerprint scanner, uh, not having one is a really big pain. Unlocking the phone, waking the phone, all those kind of things is so much nicer with the fingerprint scanner, so uh, definitely a thing to look out for is a fingerprint scanner of some sort. Though, don't buy a first generation fingerprint scanner unit because they're trash. So things like the HTC One Max with that weird swipey thing, the um, Samsung Galaxy Alpha and a couple other early Galaxy phones that had the old swipe your finger over the scanner, they're absolutely rubbish. Don't go ahead and buy them. But definitely something with a fingerprint scanner is needed here in 2018. Now, on paper, if you were to take out some of the specifications of this particular phone and put them side by side with something modern today, it's actually a not too bad deal. For instance, here are some specs of the HTC One M9 Plus versus the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. And yes, we are being selective with what we're comparing here today, but honestly, these specs aren't exactly really that out of date and on paper don't seem too bad. And the price is really, really nice here. For about $280, which is what I picked this guys up, we're not actually getting the world's worst deal. Now again, yes, this is technically a refurb, repack unit, but all in all, the phone itself is still technically new. And if we go ahead and take a look at a big box store here in 2018, what exactly can I pick up? Well, not exactly that much. Taking a look at the local big box store, JB Hi-Fi for us here in Australia, or I think, 
or whatever else would be in your region, uh, we are looking at not exactly a whole bunch of options for that 280 Australian dollars. There's the Samsung Galaxy J2 uh, Pro, which is a plastic, fantastic, cheap brick that really isn't that fantastic. There are also to a bunch of other low-cost Nokias, which aren't exactly the world's most special thing. I mean, heck, for the lower price, we could have gone with like an old-school button Nokia, but uh, you can go ahead and grab some Nokias that are running Android 1, which do definitely look good on paper, but eh, we're going to steer clear of them. And the only thing that I would consider buying in the same price range would be the LG Q6, which still features a craptastic plastic back and a rear-mounted speaker despite being a new phone. It's still also to uses micro USB and has a lot of problems that older flagships have overcome already. So for the same price, we're still getting a slightly better deal with our older phone. Now, taking a look closer at the specs department, yeah, that's when newer phones do start to win out. Now, if you weren't aware of the specs, the HTC One M9 Plus back in 2015 is rocking a 5.2 inch 1440p LCD display, a 20 megapixel camera on this back of this guy with the old school five minute recording limit on 4K video, three gigs of RAM, and a MediaTek MT6795T Halo X10 CPU. 32 gigs of storage is also to paired up with there with the ability to expand with micro SD expansion and a 2840 milliamp hour battery. Now, yes, on paper, taking a look at something a little bit more modern, might have a bit more storage, might have a better processor. Okay, will have a better processor. And there will be other things like more RAM on modern devices. However, there are still a bunch of specs that cheaper phones don't deliver, such as a metal build, 4K video recording, and in some cases, even three gigs of RAM. Sure doesn't sound like much today, but a lot of phones in the same price bracket don't have that much RAM on board, which is really nice to see. We're still getting a fair bit here. Now, this particular guy is running Android 6.0, and especially over on the Android side, we're not as lucky as some of the iPhone users where this guy's got 6.0, but is not getting any more upgrades as we speak, and is probably not even going to get a further security patch down the line, so there's really not much support over on the software side. Sure, if you are into the whole flashing ROMs and those types of things, power to you. You can definitely do that. However, if you're just going to take it out of the box and use it, there's not a whole bunch of options here. But what's it like to use a 2015 phone in 2018 as a daily driver device? Well, again, as I did mention, I've used it for a past about two weeks, getting on to three weeks by the time this video comes out, definitely will be using it into the future. So uh, here are some notes that I've gone ahead and made in comparison to running a brand new phone. So definitely the first thing that did stand out was the lack of USB-C. I didn't realize how much I loved it. I've had four phones now with USB-C and it has been absolutely awesome. Now, yes, there is the new inventions such as reversible uh, micro SD, micro SD, micro USB connectors rather, that really make things awesome to use and much more like a USB-C experience. However, it is still a flimsy kind of connector and it's really not that great. Another thing, bezel size, uh, that definitely got me. I didn't realize how small bezels have gotten until I started using older phones once again. Coming from a phone that has something ridiculous like an 80 nine something uh, screen to body ratio this guy is actually featuring a really low screen to body ratio something around the uh, 60 around percent the exact numbers on the screen can't remember off the top of my head but the screen bezel is kind of ridiculous now yes this particular phone does make up for it by having big dual front facing speakers which is definitely awesome to have uh, but yeah that screen to body ratio kind of crazy and blows my mind and I think there's phones now out with like 97 98 percent screen to body ratio which is really, really insane. Another thing that's something that I also too didn't notice that I absolutely love is flat glass on the screen. Now, obviously it's something you can't see when I'm holding the phone up, but definitely if we take a look at some B-roll shots, the glass edge to edge is completely flat. Now, that doesn't sound like that much sort of an awesome thing. Why would you care about that? But especially for people who do use screen protectors, and I do find myself putting a screen protector on, especially a little bit older phones that may not have the strongest Gorilla Glass out there, it just makes my life so much easier. Older or newer phones rather, like the uh, Mate 10 Pro right here, have curved edges or 2.5D glass, which sure looks really nice in pictures, looks really nice in the showroom, but as soon as you use it in the real world, it's 
it's an absolute disaster. From being really easy to actually crack that curved little edge, to being putting on screen protectors that just break as soon as you look at them because of the fact the edges are just so weak. Not to mention, haloing is another massive problem when you do have a 2.5D or curved glass display. Now yes, companies like Samsung have been doing it in my opinion right and actually using it as a feature to have a curved display, but just adding 2.5D glass or 2.5D glass is the stupidest invention out there and I challenge anyone in the comment sections to find a use for 2.5D glass that is better than just flat glass. There is no benefit, in my opinion, of having curved glass or 2.5D glass. Again, I challenge anyone in the comment sections to tell me why uh, 2.5D glass is better than flat glass because it's not. Screen protectors, way easier to throw in this guy, you don't mess it up as easy, and if you go ahead and nick the edge, the whole screen isn't gonna shatter because you've nicked that little curve. It's just gonna nick the aluminium or plastic depending on what phone you do have. So that's one thing I didn't realize I miss, flat glass. Biometrics is something that I did mention earlier that you definitely need, and I can definitely say, going back to even something like the M9, not the M9 Plus, I really miss fingerprint scanners. They are an absolute awesome thing to have, so definitely fingerprint scanners is something you do want to go ahead and grab on your next uh, phone, or rather next old phone. Uh, it is still something that we need even back from older flagship devices. Definitely a downside. Another final note that I did make was the camera. Yes, it looks like it is straight out of 2015, and that's because in my case, it is straight out of 2015. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of just what you do get with older phones. The cameras just aren't as good. Uh, that is definitely where something like a mid and low range phone from 2018 definitely starts to make it up because cameras have gotten really, really good recently. Like Google Pixel level and even Huawei have been really pushing the levels of cameras, Apple even for that matter. So back in 2015, cameras are a order of magnitude not as good as what they are here today. So that's definitely something you do want to take into consideration. Whilst the rest of the phone might be good, definitely that camera will be lacking. And I guess speaking of lacking, battery life will also to be lacking. Again, things like fast charging have definitely come a long way. Battery lives have definitely come a long way. Software optimization has definitely come a long way. In terms of the battery and longevity of a phone, definitely we've come a long way since 2015. So TLDR time and a bit of a conclusion for this video. Buying a used flagship phone or even just an old flagship phone from quite a few years ago might not necessarily be the world's worst idea. For me, I did pick up the HTC One M9 Plus for around that 280 Australian dollar price point, and for the same price, you can't exactly buy a whole bunch of phones that actually rival it here in today's mid to low range market. Sure, there's a lot of options out there, but a lot of them are just craptastic plastic pieces that have really terrible specs or just something that is an absolute deal breaker for a lot of people out there. The metal build is actually something that I really do like and being someone who doesn't like to run a case or really much more than a skin, well, as you can see by these phones, definitely it was really nice to have that metal build, but a lot of people will just be throwing a case on this guy. But all in all, the actual use of an older phone isn't exactly the world's worst thing. Sure, there are a number of things that are not going to be as good with a used or old phone, such as the camera's not going to be as good, battery life probably won't be as good, and software support most likely won't be as good. However, there are still a lot of advantages such as the actual premium and also to the better performance than a lot of your lower end stuff that are on the market here today. And heck, even 4K recording is something that some phones still don't offer at the exact same price point as one of these older or used flagships. And hey, if you also too want to grab one of these guys, you even get a headphone jack and don't need an adapter. So sure, there are a lot of drawbacks to daily driving an older phone here in 2018, but I have to say for a lot of people out there who don't want to go and spend big bucks on getting a premium phone, phone, this is one of the easiest ways to pick one up. And again, I only picked mine up for about 280 Australian dollars, which wasn't a too bad deal. But let me know what you think down in that comment sections. If you couldn't afford a top tier brand new phone today, would you buy something that's new for cheap or would you buy an older generation flagship? Personally, I'm going with that older generation flagship, but do let me know down in that comment sections. If you want to pick up one of these guys, I'll leave them linked down in the description box. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.